just sat down to do a rise and now it just started to rain on me. Should I just do it in the rain? Let's do it. God's timing, right? I was just trying to get the camera set up and it started sprinkling on me. Maybe I can get it done in time before I get pounded on by the rain. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. I'm currently outside as usual because you guys refuse to let me go inside. Y'all love it out here with the wind chimes and all of nature, elements, rain on me. Uh, you're going to hear lots of noise today because of all the tree cleanup going on. There's construction going on there, there. Granger's cutting down trees over there. They're sawing over there. Bonfires are everywhere. Burning brush. It's starting to rain a little harder. I might have to pause this. Welcome back guys. So, I'm out of breath. Rain is forecasted all day today and all day tomorrow and I have been so busy this week. This is gonna sound really echoey in here, I'm sorry. I have been so busy this week with lots of stuff. Today is Saturday, Arise is due by now to have it out for you guys in the morning so I had to come inside. So this room is actually gonna be the podcast room when it's all finished. And I was just thinking there's two windows on the other side of me. I could lift those windows up for like rainy days like today and put wind chimes out there on the trees so you guys can still hear the wind chimes and dogs and all that stuff. But this is our podcast room. Granger will have one side. This will actually be my back. Um, I was gonna do this in like a uh, shiplap and have a really cool neon arise sign and um, Hopefully the echo will be gone when they get all the texture in the walls and the floors in. But today I thought I would bring you guys here. So this is our new home, part of our new home. Um, just wanna welcome you guys again. Hopefully the, the audio quality will be okay since I'm in here and it's really echoey, I'm so sorry. Thank you all for joining me. If this is your first arise, I am normally outside in all the elements, wind, rain, sun, sleet, snow, wind chimes and animals, but I needed to come in today to get this done for y'all. So I want to always start us off with a prayer. Um, and I also wanted to add that I got a message from a woman named Kathy this morning. And I just want you to know that I did read your message and I am praying for you. You know who you are if you messaged me this morning. So lifting you up um, as well with everything that you're going through right now. So just know that my heart is with you and let's get started with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our time together today. Lord, I thank you for everyone who is listening and watching all around the world. I thank you if this is their 45th time here. I thank you if this is their first time here, God. I appreciate everyone who wants to come hear a word from you. I don't want them to come to hear a word from me, God. I want, I want it to be your voice that comes through me, your word, your spirit. Anything that, I, that comes out of me, I want to be from you, God, not from my own heart. Um, I am just grateful for your presence in all of our lives. You know what each person is going through, God. We lift them up to you. We raise them up to you. You are the healer. You are the protector. You are the forgiver. You are the God of so many things, Lord. You are the God of truth. We trust you. We appreciate you. We follow you. Help us to seek you every day, God. And I just pray that somebody gets a fresh word from you today, Lord. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. All right. So I have been thinking a lot about having a clean heart, having a new heart, you know, when being born again, having a fresh, a fresh heart, a new heart every day. And I always tell you guys, whenever I start thinking about something, sometimes I see a certain verse over and over and over throughout the week. And I've been studying Ezekiel. We are on the scripture that says, Ezekiel, it's 36, 26. And it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So we were already studying this in my Bible study in Ezekiel. My brother-in-law told me to watch a movie called The Case for Christ. It's amazing. If you guys haven't seen it, look that up. Let me know if you have seen it. Comment down below. So I have seen that verse multiple times this week. And I've also um, heard Psalm 5110 multiple times this week. And that is, it's written by David and it's written in the Old Testament. It's written 
David was a man after God's own heart, but he was not perfect. He was a sinner. He was a murderer. He was an adulterer. And so he's crying out to God in this psalm, and it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. I love the part where it says, uphold me with a willing spirit, because in our walk with Christ, in our walk with the Lord, it takes a willing spirit, and that is not always easy for us to do. We don't always want to obey. We don't always want to seek God's will, but that is what we are called to do. It's not always easy. It's hard. We want things of this world. We want things to fulfill us. We want things to make us happy. We want things to make us comfortable. And we are called to walk in obedience with the Lord. And that is not always comfortable. And that is not always easy. So I love where it says, uphold me with a willing spirit. So I think that is something that we need to be praying about every day, praying for a clean heart, praying for a new heart. I pray Ezekiel over people all the time, you know, people who may be far from Christ. I pray that, the God, I pray that our Lord removes that heart of stone from them and places in them a new heart, a heart of flesh. David's prayer was under the old covenant with God. That was before, you know, Jesus was sent for the atonement to, to save us and to forgive us. And all of our sins were forgiven through his blood sacrifice. But I still think it's so important and so needed for us to pray for a clean heart every day. You know, we, we still live in a fallen world. We still have such sinful hearts. Even if you are a believer and a follower and a disciple of Christ, our hearts are just sinful. You know, we're prideful, we're angry, we're impatient, we're lustful, we are greedy. There's just so many things of, of the nature of our heart that we need to pray for God to give us a new heart. And I think that is something that we should be praying for every day. New mercies are new every morning. New prayers can be said every morning that, you know, maybe I messed up yesterday, Lord. Repent and turn away. Forgive me, God. Create in me a new, clean heart, Lord. Help me to have a willing spirit to obey what you want me to be, what you want me to become, and how you want me to act and live in this life. God is after our hearts. He is wanting to transform us and, and, and to build us and create us and to mold us into who we were meant to be. And he is in the transformation business. He wants to transform and restore and redeem and reconcile everything in this broken world. And speaking of transform, transforming hearts and, and transforming souls, I went to Radiant Conference this weekend. It was, as always, I think this is my fourth one, I believe. It's always amazing. It's always so fulfilling and it's always so fresh with a new word from God. And, um, Alex Seeley was a speaker, Christine Kane, Lauren, Lori Champion. A lot of our speakers spoke on the same verses and they didn't even know what each one was speaking about. And so you know that it's just the Holy Spirit of God coming in, changing their heart, putting on their heart something that the Lord wants us to hear. Um, Christine said that she came with two messages already prepared and then the night before she scratched all that because she felt the Spirit telling her, I need to preach on this, which was basically the same exact message in a different way than the speaker the next morning. And so I just love how God works in that way and he just confirms what we are already feeling, what we are already seeing. So I hope you guys see that. I hope you guys feel confirmation for things that you are seeing or hearing or feeling in your life and just know that that is the work of God in you and the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart. I, I bought tickets for this conference last year after last year's conference and I knew I bought them. I, I knew that I paid for them. I knew that I bought them, but I couldn't find them. When I went to look for them this year, I went on the website. Had, they had no record of my order. I went um, in my bank account. There was no record of my payment. So I thought, well, maybe I just didn't hit confirm or payment or whatever. So I rebought the tickets. So I ended up um, paying for the tickets twice because the next day I got the email confirmation of both orders. Don't know how that happened, but I know that that was from God because there was so many of my sisters in Christ who I felt needed to be there. And so that gave me double the amount of tickets to bless them with. I had bought some for, for people for Christmas and then I had, I just had extra and abundance. And I thought, God, you know, a friend of mine said, you know, God gave you these extra tickets so you could bless people. So I was able to invite 11 of my sisters in Christ and we all went and we all cried together and we all held each other and we all grew, grew closer together. And we are all in such different places in our walk with the Lord. We are all going through different things. We all have our own struggles. We all have our own triumphs, but 
it was so nice for all of us just to come together, pray together, worship together, and just be with each other. And another special thing that happened was, I know I've talked to you guys about the twins, Levi and Lainey, who had drowned in Indiana. In Indiana. Lainey is a miracle. She is, is back to her little rambunctious self and she is she they think she is healed and and haven't hasn't shown any remnants of brain damage as of yet levi you guys know if you follow the story is still fighting to come back he is a miracle already he they told him he had no activity no brain activity he's already opened his eyes he's already in a lot of treatments his mom megan and his dad scott they have been traveling all across the country seeking these innovative amazing treatments oxygen treatments and um, just going to all these different amazing doctors to help them to bring their little boy back. And by the grace of God, Megan was in Austin this weekend. And so I reached out to her and I just told her, I said, I said, I would love to meet you. If you're here, I would love to help you out. Do whatever you need. Come over, um, sit with Levi if you need a rest, you know, do, do anything that I can do while you're in town because I just know that she's so tired and so weary and she is just fighting for her son to come back. And so we were able to connect while she was here in Austin. We had dinner and we cried. And then the next day, I knew that she had treatments all week in Austin, so I didn't want to bother her or anything, but I felt the Lord pressing on me, you need to invite her to this conference. So I sent her a message and I invited her and she graciously came on Friday night. And I just told her, I said, I feel the Lord pulling me to invite you to come. I know you have treatments you have to do, but if you just want to come and cry and worship, please come. So she accepted and she came and she told me right at that moment that I sent her the message. She had been crying and praying about both of our stories because we had very different outcomes in our stories, but we were both so still so full of hope. So I was able to uh, invite her to come and I'll have Paul put a picture there of us. Um, so it was just, I know it was God's timing. I know I was supposed to invite every girl that was there with me and they all needed something from that conference and I just can't wait for 2022 already. If you guys have never heard of Radiant Conference, I do not get anything for, for promoting this or saying this. I just love my church home and I just love this conference so much and I feel like it would be such a blessing to you. It's radiantconference.com. Tickets, I believe, are already on sale uh, for next year's conference. And I don't know if it'll be online next year uh, like it was this year because of the pandemic and everything, but if it's online, sign up to get online tickets. Um, it's the same thing that you're gonna see in person and I just think it will bless you in so many ways. So also they, uh, Celebration Church, they wanted to film my testimony this year. So they, um, they filmed a video that I wanna show you guys. And this was played at Radiant Conference and me and my girlfriends and my mom and everybody just, just held each other and cried. And I'm just so, so, so thankful for my church and my friends and my small groups and our leaders, our pastors, Joe and Lori, and everyone who was involved in creating this video. I know it was hard to create. Lewis, who, who made the video and edited the video, he said there was so much opposition creating this video that things kept happening. and He kept feeling that it was the enemies trying to get this message not to get out you know, the power would go out and we had the storm and he actually got COVID while he was working on this. And so all these things kept happening and he was like, no, no, not today, Satan. We're, we're gonna film this testimony. So I wanted to leave you with that today. And I just wanna let you know that no matter what you are facing, no matter what battle you see, that God already sees your victory. And I just want you to know that. And I hope that you can pray for a clean heart this week and every day moving forward and know that he has you and he has a plan for your life and you guys are chosen and so loved and I'm grateful for each of you here. So I will leave you with that today and I will leave you with my testimony video and I hope it can give somebody else who may be going through a hard time just some hope moving forward to... Hey, yeah. <laughs> I've been spying on you for a long time. I hope it can give somebody just a little hope moving forward to wake up and keep going and keep fighting and keep taking that next step because you can do it. You can do hard things and God is working everything out for your good and his glory. So you guys are chosen. Have a wonderful week. I will see you next week. And I want to leave you with one more thing. One of the speakers, Alex Seeley said, when you're in covenant with God, you've already won. And I think that is so encouraging and so hopeful. Have a great week. I'll see you next time. Bye.
I love Jesus. I love my family. I love um, playing with my kiddos outside. I love our church. I grew up in Texas my whole life. We had a pretty normal, normal childhood growing up. Um, we went to church. I did cheerleading and played tennis and had a good group of friends. I've been married to my husband for 11 years. We have three kiddos. We have London, Lincoln, and River. And London's nine. She's our girl, our fiery firecracker girl. We have Lincoln, he's our middle. He just turned seven. He has the sweetest heart in the world and he keeps us laughing all day. And we have River. He was the only baby that I woke up in the middle of the night on the day that I was supposed to have him and I felt contractions. And so it's kind of perfect for him because he's always ready, always wants to go fast, always, you know, so that would just fit his spirit so much. And so we had him on May 16th and he was just the, the happiest baby, the happiest child. He always just was so happy with just a little dump truck and some dirt. And I just remember him always being so dirty, like his little feet were always so dirty and muddy. He loved to jump in muddy puddles. He just loved to be with the land and with like the elements outside, dirt and mud and bugs and rocks and I guess just your typical little boy. I woke up that morning, a normal day. Uh, I think Granger was, he was gone, I believe, for part of the day. Um, so I had the kiddos all by myself, and it was one of those stressful mom days. We had dinner, it was a normal, a normal night where we had dinner, and I remember we had our back doors open, and Lincoln and River wanted to go outside. And it's, I mean, they always go outside and play. My husband was out there, and Lincoln and River started playing with water guns, and they were using those little water shooters that you soak up, soak up the water, and Granger said they were like pulling water out of the dog bowls, and he was doing gymnastics with London. While the, the boys were playing, Granger said he had his back to, to the pool uh, with London, and he said he was just watching her, and he felt in that moment, soak in this moment, because it's not gonna be here forever. And he said in that moment, he felt it was a little too quiet, and so he turned around and he, he, immediately, he immediately thought pool, which is something we, we never thought about. You know, we had a, a big gate around our pool. We never worried about that. If, if we didn't see a river, he was on his tractor or he was in the dirt. But he said for some reason he felt pool. And he turned around and he saw him. All I remember is um, I heard my daughter scream. All I could make out because she was outside was river and pool. And so I just started running and I was thinking he must still be in the water. I'm gonna grab him and he's gonna be fine. But by the time I got out there, um, Granger was already doing CPR on him. He yelled at me to call 911. I ran back out and we were trading off doing CPR until, until the ambulance came. When the ambulance got there, they, they pushed us away they, and they started questioning us. And we had heard that they got his heartbeat back. So we thought, he's gonna be fine. Like, we'll, we'll go to the hospital, like, let's go. The doctor came in and said, I'm so sorry, there's, there's no brain activity at all. And just, you just can't understand how your son could just be laughing and playing 12 hours ago and have absolutely no activity, like not even 1% or 2% or some chance. We called all our family in and we had to wait for the recipients of the organs. And then the next day we had to take him down the hall to the operating room and we had to say goodbye to him while, while he was still technically breathing. And then we had to go home and tell our kids that their brother wasn't coming home. The day we told them, London said, how long did River live? And it, my husband said, just a, a little bit over a thousand days. And we always said, he lived those thousand days like to the fullest. He never knew hurt, he never knew pain, he never knew heartbreak. All he knew was love and playing. And that's a good way to live. And so we try to tell ourselves every day just to live like Riv. Just be in the moment, not, not so much live for today, but just be in the moment. Whatever moment you're in, be in that moment because we're just not promised tomorrow. We were already growing closer in Christ before we lost Riv, which I'm so grateful now because if I didn't have that foundation, I don't know where I would have been in 2019 with, when, that, when that hit us. But 2019 was, I have to say, like my most transformative year, I think, and, and how my husband and I grew closer together in Christ and how our whole family grew closer together. And my biggest thing has just been my surrender. I've laid on the floor so many times and just said, I can't do this. And he's just carried me. He's just carried me because there's no other way that I would be able to walk. But it takes that surrender. It takes me not trying to do it on my own because I can't. And so I think just his, 
his love for me and just knowing that he's just, he will carry you. He will carry you if you let him. I lost my way in my teen and my teens and early 20s and I didn't know the Lord and I said, you know, I think I want to get baptized again. And when we finally found our church home and we finally were joined together with so many wonderful people and our walk has grown so much closer together, I wanted to publicly display, you know, my love for the Lord and my changed heart and how I've been born again. I was baptized with my daughter and I just, I wanted to make sure she knew what it meant. It was just so, so special to me. I think it was a little hard for him um, seeing us go under, but I think it, it was also healing for him to see us come out. And we think about that with Riv, you know, he went in, but Jesus took him out for us to feel that too and know that we are born again in our hearts and Jesus has River and Jesus also has us. It was really powerful. Our church community, you know, my friends, our family, everybody has just pulled together so, so much. And I'm just so grateful that we have our church, our small group, and it's, it's so needed. You can't do it alone. And you need the Lord, but you also need community and you need people. Like we were created for community to walk with each other through this, this hard life. We need each other. When you go through a tragedy or loss, like you can feel like you're, you're never gonna smile again or you're never gonna laugh again or you're never gonna feel love again and you will. You will. I had a friend invite me to my first Radiant Conference and I just walked out of it different. You know, and people say that, like these things just change you. And just seeing these women get up there and speak and all what they've been through and still, still just so strong in their faith for the Lord, it just made me want to feel that too. I am forever changed. I am a disciple. I am loved. I am forgiven. I am hopeful. I am peaceful. I am joyful and I am held. I feel His presence so strongly in my life, just holding me and carrying me as I move forward.